This is Michael Woodward, and this is episode 207 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast, where we interview amazing people who turn their dreams and ideas into reality. Along the way, we'll share some tips on how you can turn your own dreams and ideas into reality too. Our guest on today's episode is Kendrick Gwynn. More about Kendrick in a moment. If you're new to the Jumble Think Podcast or you've been listening to it for a long time and you haven't subscribed already, swing on over to wherever you like to listen to your podcasts and click that magical subscribe button so you never miss an episode of the Jumble Think Podcast. Now, while you're there, leave us a rating and review. Let others know what you think of the podcast too. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host. We have a really fun episode lined up for you today. Before we get going, we want to thank today's sponsors for this episode. Our friends over at Floxy, Mighty Travels, and OpportunityInChina.com. You're going to be hearing a little bit more about them in a moment, but we're going to get ready and dive right into today's episode. It's so exciting for us. We are launching season three in this episode, and we are stepping it up in season three with even more amazing makers, dreamers, entrepreneurs, people who are taking those dreams and turning them into reality. We've got some great people lined up for you, but today on the podcast, to kick it all off, our guest is a guy named Kendrick Gwynn. Now, you might not know Kendrick by name, but you should because he's doing really, really, really cool stuff. He is the CEO and co-founder of a killer company called Republic, an investment platform that provides both accredited and non-accredited investors around the world with curated startup investment opportunities. Republic also facilitates compliant investing in blockchain-enabled projects under the brand Republic Crypto. Republic is an affiliate of AngelList and CoinList, the latter of which he is the founding advisor. Prior to Republic, Kendrick served as general counsel and venture hacker at AngelList, and before that, fellow of Stanford Law School and the Rock Center for Corporate Governance at Stanford University. Kendrick is also formerly a securities attorney And he's been working on several initiatives aimed at defining a compliant but pragmatic protocol for conducting compliant coin offerings and has briefed the SEC, Congress, and foreign regulators on that issue. He frequently lectures on the topics of the intersection of law and entrepreneurship, and his views have been cited in a number of court decisions and publications. An immigrant from Vietnam, Kendrick has a strong interest in approving access to capital for underserved entrepreneurs in the U.S. and beyond. Now, I mentioned he is the CEO and co-founder of a killer company called Republic. So let me tell you a little bit more about Republic. Republic is an investment platform for startups to raise capital and for everyone to invest in startups. You can check them out and learn more about what Republic's doing at www.republic.co or facebook.com slash join Republic. Now let's dive into our conversation with Kendrick Gwynn. Our guest today is Kendrick Gwynn, and he is the co-founder and CEO of a killer company called Republic. Super excited to have you on the podcast. Thanks for taking so much time to be on with us. Michael, thank you so much for having me. All right, so... You have a crazy story of how you got to Republic because you've done big <laughs> things. You've worked with some great organizations uh, like AngelList and CoinList and things people know in the investor space, people know in the tech space. And now you're on your own adventure. So tell us a little bit about your journey of finding entrepreneurship along the way and saying, you know, I've got a cool idea. I want to start that. Thank you, Michael. And my journey into entrepreneurship is a little unusual in that I didn't just drop out of college and uh, decided to build my own company. As an immigrant from Vietnam, uh, my parents were like, you got to pursue a career that pays a salary. And so, of course, (laughs) became a a lawyer, practiced law in New York. And that wasn't fulfilling enough, even though I love the law. So I went back into academia and I was like, you know what? I love teaching, but I didn't love like writing papers. And next thing, one thing led to the 
year there, I uh, joined Angelus as their general counsel. Right. And the reason why I did that was here's an opportunity to blend law and business, uh, and more importantly, the mission yeah. of of bringing finance and capital to founders was what I found very compelling. So it didn't take, it took like a good decade wow. after I started out uh, being a professional, making a salary, you know, until I, uh, until I joined a startup. Wow. All right. So where did the idea for Republic come from? Like what, when was that moment where you went, uh, maybe you're talking to some friends. I know you have some co-founders, but you just went, there's something here. Let's do it. So Republic, in essence, is an extension of what Angelus was building. Yeah. So Angelus aimed to democratize investing by allowing accredited investor, i.e. millionaires by virtue yeah. of law, yeah. but you don't have to be in the valley to invest in tech. Yeah. Uh, so the law changed in 2016 for the first time in 80 years that you don't have to be a millionaire to invest. Right. And I just thought that, hey, this is really you know, seeing the full potential of investing democratization, yeah. uh, you should leave it open to everyone rather than just the wealthiest 1%. Yeah. Uh, and that's when the idea of leaving and setting up, uh, you know, Angelus version two, yeah. i.e. Republic. Yeah, and, and a lot of our listeners are not gonna understand the difference between accredited and unaccredited investors. They're gonna be looking at this going, I, you mean I can't invest into things that I, I want to invest in? But tell us a little bit about that law and the shift. What was it, Title Three? And there was a shift in the law there where uh, anyone can invest now up to a certain amount. I would take it back even further. So okay. after the Great Depression yeah. in, in the 30s, uh, government, the Congress decided, hey, to prevent investors getting duped, mm -hmm. they passed this whole new framework. And basically, unless a company goes IPO, yeah. which is very expensive, yeah. you've got to be a millionaire in order to take the risk and be a private investor. Right. So that went on for like 80 plus years. Yeah. And then the whole wealth generation event in Silicon Valley, that ended up benefiting only the rich they congress agreed in 2016 under the obama administration to change that and allow everyone doesn't matter if you're a student doesn't matter if you're a billionaire to invest small amount in companies yeah. so they undo the millionaire requirement right. in order for you to be a private investor yeah. Now, I, I started a, well, I didn't start up a uh, startup. I, I worked with a startup. Uh, and was, it was my first job in tech, really. I had worked at a church. N not many people that listen actually know this. I, I worked for the startup. And I remember one of the battles all the time was, how are we going to raise more capital? Right. And it was always the struggle. And there was limitations about how many investors we could have, what they look like. And so it was a, a struggle at times to uh, try to raise capital. Tell us a little bit about how Republic is shifting that game uh, and allowing startups or other businesses that are early uh, starters to raise that capital in a much more fluid, much more accessible way using this technology online. It used to be that, and it doesn't go back all that far, 10 years ago, yeah. you got to know one of like three dozen venture capitalists, individuals in Silicon Valley. Right in order to have a shot <laughs> at getting venture financing. Yeah. So if you're an amazing founder out of Alabama, Montgomery, and you just happen to not have the money to travel and pound the pavement in Sand Hills Row, you know, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, Angel has changed that by building a platform and say, hey, we're going to get capital for millionaires. May they be a retired dentist in Milwaukee. Yeah. So to give more capital and providing a little bit more access, which did a lot of good. Yeah. But what Republic is doing now is saying that of the 99%, essentially everyone in the U.S. from students to retirees, on Republic can dish out as little as $20 and $50 into startups that they believe in, and it can be founders based in Alaska. We have <laughs> uh, a female founder in Alaska raising over $600,000 wow. on our platform recently. Yeah. Um, so using technology, bridging people, investors, in small dollar amounts, but in large numbers to founders around the country. Right. And that way, I think we play our part in improving access to capital that's never been done before. I, I love that because 
there is a lot of power in being able to connect and support things you believe in. And one of the things that is awesome about uh, Republic is that you are passionate about what you call mission-driven startups. Uh, you're very picky on the <laughs> startups that actually make the platform. Uh, I think the statistic I saw in an interview was that uh, you're more picky than Harvard is with acceptance, if I remember correctly. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the process for vetting and deciding this is a startup we feel is a mission-driven startup. And what does that mean for them to be mission-driven uh, in your mind? How do you define that? A uh, great question, Michael. Uh, to, to touch on the statistic, uh, we launched uh, in the last three years uh, less than 5% of wow. the companies that have applied. So about 60 companies out of over 3,500. Yeah. The uh, lens on mission-driven uh, is out of the Republic ethos that nothing is worth doing in life. It's not meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to work with founders that are building a company, a business, because of something more than just bottom line. Yeah. Of course, return on investment matters. But if you care and you're so passionate about something <laughs> else, Building a startup, as you know, is really hard. Yes. So if you really care about beyond just money, during the lowest peaks, that's going to get you over the hump yeah. and be able to ride it out yeah. and net-net return more, uh, invest, you know, re yield more returns for your investors. Right. So based on that, it's not so much that you have to have a model that's saving children in Asia. It's just that you got to be have a mission, being truly passionate about that underlying cause. So that's that why one lens is a key lens for companies applying to raise on Republic. And, and I love that because I've talked to entrepreneurs and investors. Uh, I have some good friends that are uh, angel investors in Silicon Valley. And uh, sometimes their purpose is money. Uh, and that's okay. Um, that is, they that's define that and that's great. And money is important in this journey of why you invest into things. And that's what makes the world goes round. <laughs> yeah. And it's capital that's the, the energy, the water to feed the tree that is yeah. a company. So yeah. it's very important. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and going one step further, uh, for a startup founder and for a team, having a mission to rally around is what sustains you because building a startup uh, whether it's a small level startup, uh, a small business, a mom and pop shop, or a business that is going to become a unicorn. Uh, and we've worked with some of those. And uh, no matter the level, the journey is uh, tough. It's a hard journey of yeah. startup. And some people go, oh, yeah, they started in a garage, now they're a billion dollar company. It, it was easy. But that's not the reality. And that mission, that, that purpose that drives forward is so important on getting a company through the hard seasons, purpose and dri uh, drive only gets you so far. Execution of an idea and dream is where that idea becomes reality and actually brings shifts. So how are you taking these companies that come in and uh, you go, hey, we, we think that you're a great fit for us. How are you making sure that they execute and that you're being a good steward of those people investing on your platform? Um, being mission-driven is only one element, one of the many lenses that we uh, apply okay. in evaluating a company. Yeah. Uh, that's a key lens. It's different than the venture lens, but we do apply some of the traditional metrics. That is, does the team have domain expertise in the space? Do they have adequate runway? <laughs> that is, adequate money to execute on their plan. Yeah. So some of the uh, the metric, the evaluation that we uh, that we apply to our, our due diligence process borrow from our experience in venture in, in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, and we also, after a company has launched on Republic, we'll play a very, I would say, white glove service and being very hands-on during the campaign, but also after the campaign mm. to make sure that they succeed on their journey. Yeah. That said, startup investing is highly risky. Yeah. It's not investing in Apple or Google, in which, <laughs> you know, in worst case scenario, you lose 30% and that's like a really bad day. <laughs> yeah. Startup investing, even on well-curated uh investment opportunities, the likelihood of total loss is very high. Yeah. But if you manage to invest in a company that does work out, then the potential return is also many, many times greater than traditional public investments. Yeah. I want to come back to 
what you guys do? Because some people might be listening and they're like still going, so what is it that they do? But most of them have heard of Kickstarter or GoFundMe. And in some ways you're similar because you're bringing these uh, great programs, these great companies in your case, to the market so people can connect with it. But you're different because there's different kinds of securities in exchange for that good. So if it's a Kickstarter campaign or GoFundMe, they're going to get goods in exchange for investment. They're not going to get a uh, percentage of this, the, the company or stock or that kind of thing. Talk to us a little bit about what the investor gets in exchange for investing in the companies on, on Republic. The way I would differentiate between, say, Kickstarter, yeah. which is also crowdfunding, yes. and Republic, um, is that Kickstarter is essentially buying a product. You're just pre-buying it. Yeah. Republic is buying into the company. Okay. So let's say you go to a restaurant, a Chinese restaurant around the corner, yeah. and you buy, uh, you know, some wonton, some some dish. Yeah. You love it, and you may come back, you may not. Okay. If somehow. Instead, in addition to buying that dish and being a customer, you're allowed to invest a hundred dollars into the company. That later on, if PF Chang's acquired the company for 10x the value, <laughs> that all of a sudden you get a thousand dollars, you know, in the in the bank. Yeah. But more importantly, you're gonna take your friends to that restaurant every Friday or Saturday or Sunday for yeah. brunch and saying that, hey, I'm an investor in this restaurant. I'm gonna take you here. They don't need to know how much you're an investor yeah, in. Yeah. But but that psychological engagement, that's just part of being a human. Right. And so the concept of buying in yeah. is you know is universal yeah it's it's just that people haven't been able to do it and now we're hoping to making to make that uh, a mainstream thing yeah and ownership is a powerful tool because when you have ownership you feel like you have a responsibility to to that whatever it is that absolutely you and to the business uh, it's great to have yelp or zach at reviews five star eight star yeah if you Im can you imagine telling people that my customers love me in the restaurant so much yeah. that 800 of them put in money yeah. after eating at the restaurant, right? Yeah. It's just a whole new brand loyalty yeah. and uh, value proposition that's unprecedented. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, there's different kinds of exchanges that they get. I know that there's crowd, crowd safe and crowd SDA. Tell us about the different kinds of ownership that they get as part of that uh, investment that they're making. So for um, the investors, I think generally all they need to know is that if they invest, buy in, yeah. and if the company does well, does 10x as well, then they get 10x roughly back. Yeah. The instrument, the legal mechanics to make it simple for the companies, there's so many forms, and Republic currently has five, six former attorneys wow. working internally on the team wow. uh, in addition to myself. So we're able to navigate that intersection between law and finance and technology okay. in a way that few uh, startups or companies can. Yeah. Uh, so all of these legal instruments is just a way that we make the process easier for everyone. Super, super cool. As we wrap up this segment, we always ask these final three questions. How are you personally finding purpose and what you're building at Republic? That's a uh, question that I've been wrestling with uh, since high school. Wow. Uh, which is, what is meaningful in life? You yeah. know, there's a book called Men's Search for Meaning. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a guide, uh, but... Uh, about four or five years ago, I've come to at least a message that remains to be the same today for me uh, since then, and I doubt it will ever change. I think at least it's a very subjective thing, but yeah. for me anyway, uh, the purpose in life is to be as meaning, to add as much value as possible to the people around you and ensure that they are happy at what they do. So if I end up being a homeless person at the foot of the Brooklyn Bridge, okay. then the very least I can do is, I don't know, make some jokes and have the other homeless people around me laugh. And I think that in and by itself is meaningful. Yeah. If life opportunities are such that I have the, the chance, the opportunity to do more, in this case, to help rich finance and capital, great. Uh, and that's, <laughs> so, so given the opportunities in life, uh, what I'm doing now is my my, the way that I know best yeah. in adding value to those around me. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that I imagine seeing myself doing for decades to come. Love that. It's a great perspective. Absolutely. So important. And I, I love your outlook on that. How long has Republic been around? 
Uh, two and a half years. Okay, so you're still pretty new, but you're, you're yes. you've uh, you've seen some actual track record here. Being that you're still new, there are uh, and even companies that like Apple, they're struggling with their own of things course, right now. Of course, what's one big challenge that you're facing right now? I would say uh, how to blend growth and cohesion. Okay, so growth is always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, now our team grew four x in the past twelve months. Yeah. But if you grow and without making sure that everyone is on the same page, feeling and as as one team, yeah. Then the distraction can tear apart yeah. a company ten x yeah. uh, republic in terms of resources and size. Yeah. Uh, but it takes a lot in terms of talking to everyone, making sure that you understand people's differences, and build an environment that everyone feels comfortable, welcoming, uh, and open to share their views, but you know, not, not doing so in an antagonistic way. Yeah. It takes a lot of time and effort, so that certainly is on the top of my mind right now. Absolutely. You're doing lots of great stuff. We haven't even scratched the surface on, on <laughs> how you're using uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies as part of your strategy. We're gonna talk about that more. You have a bright future ahead as a company, What's the big goal? Where do you want to go next? That, uh, that, that thing on the horizon, you just go, that's where we're going. So looking really far out, okay. I think that, um, you know, in life, you got to aim high in order to hit the bullseye, right? Yeah, yeah. In, in dark. Yeah. Uh, and I would say us aiming high is to be Amazon for private investing. Okay. So on Amazon, you're buying product. Yeah. And Republic, you're buying into companies yeah. that are early that are selling things. Yeah. But as simple, as easy, at a dollar amount, so small, yeah. like buying a product, except that you're buying into the company. Yeah. But that range of diversity in, in types and that volume in activities uh, and the hundreds of millions of people, if not billions, participating, uh, that's our goal. Super, super cool. We'll be back for segment two with Kendrick Gwynn. We want to thank our friends and sponsors of today's episode, OpportunityInChina.com, Floxy, and Mighty Travels. Here's a little bit more about our friends over at Mighty Travels. I don't know about you, but I love to travel. I just don't like looking through all the websites to find the right fares to the right locations that I want to travel to. Well, our friends over at MightyTravels.com are helping you get better rates to the places you want to travel often saving up to $190 per ticket. You should check out MightyTravels.com slash JumbleThink to learn more about how you can use their service to get the right trips booked for you at incredible rates. So swing on over, check it out, MightyTravels.com slash JumbleThink. We also want to thank our friends over at Floxy for sponsoring today's episode. Here's a little bit more about them. Floxy is doing some really, really cool stuff. Did you ever need a graphic designed, a website developed, or copywritten, but found that the designers and developers were too expensive and often took a long time to get your project completed? Well, Floxy is your answer. Floxy is your unlimited graphic design, web development, and copywriting team. Plans start at $349 per month with no hidden fees, month-to-month -month billing, and you can cancel at any time. So check them out for your next project and for the project after that at floxy.com. That's F L O C K S Y.com. And let them know that Jumble Thinks sent you. We also want to thank our friends over at OpportunityInChina.com. Here's a little bit more about them. Have you been looking for a way to change your career or social prospects? Do you see the world around you changing and haven't quite figured out? what path you should take. You are not alone in seeking opportunity. Visit opportunityinchina.com for access to scholarships to attend university in China, or if you have a bachelor's degree already, opportunityinchina.com provides access to jobs in the educational sector all across China. Now, working in China is not only often well-paid, but it will place you among one-fifth of the world's population, boosting your social network, bringing you more deeply into the story of globalization, and opening doors you never knew existed. Seize your opportunity now by visiting their website at opportunityinchina.com.
www.opportunityinchinapodcast.com. They also have a great podcast. Simply search for Opportunity in China Podcast on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. Now let's rejoin the conversation we had with Kendrick Gwynn. We are back with Kendrick to go much more deeper into the story of Republic and what they're building. First off, how can people find and connect with Republic? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, and the Republic website is republic.co.co, not yeah. .com. Okay. And anyone can just send me a message. And if you send me a message on LinkedIn, I promise I'll get back. It may take a couple of days, but I'll, I'll, I'll respond to every message. And on the Republic page, when you go to their team section, you can actually find that link for LinkedIn from your profile right there. I actually did that yesterday. Exactly. LinkedIn, Twitter, yeah. uh, AngelList, and some people put on uh, their Facebook profile. Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit about uh, you're not just doing startup funding, uh, angel or uh, VC funding for everyday people. You also have an element of cryptocurrency and, uh, and blockchain as a part of this. So tell us how that fits into the story of Republic. The way that I see blockchain technology and ICO and token sale and crypto, it's just a new vertical within the tech ecosystem. Yeah. So blockchain is a technology. A blockchain project, typically, it's just a startup. Yeah. And when people are buying tokens or cryptocurrency, they are funding the company. Yeah. It's just a new way of doing so. Yeah. So it ties very well into Republic's investment, crowdfunding for everyday people approach. Yeah. One of the stories I love that I came uh, across uh, when I was researching you was that uh, you're making investing not only accessible to uh, individuals to go invest, but you're also making it uh, accessible for unique founders to get out there, you had a 12-year-old that offered a <laughs> blockchain technology. Is that right? Uh, yes, yes. His uh, He has a board of advisors okay. that are quite seasoned, yeah. venture capitalists. But indeed, the CEO and founder uh, is a uh, the most savvy teen you know, crypto uh, expert in the country, as far <laughs> as I know. Uh, and it goes to say that uh, entrepreneurship... Um, there's no age barrier or background barrier. You know, before going to uh, work at AngelList, I worked for the founder of Sky Vodka. Okay. And he founded Sky in his 70s. Wow. And sold it some six, seven years later for hundreds of millions, <laughs> complete ownership. Wow. So, yes, so that that's the, the two threshold in, in my mind, uh, 12, 12 years old and 77 or 78, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. How does blockchain, when you you are incorporating that as part of your strategy for building Republic, uh, both as offering, off, off, uh, offering your own uh, tokens, I think it's tokens that you're offering, is that right? Uh, not yet, okay. but we are looking to quote unquote tokenizing, to okay. tokenize Republic and offering our own tokens. Okay, so it's a strategy that not only are you making others have availability to offer, but you're actually thinking about making it a part of Republic's DNA from an internal standpoint too. It's our effort to, uh, you know, do the talk the talk and walk the walk. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, mm. Now, how much of your business is going to be focused on uh, the angel, the everyday angel, and how much of it's being focused on the cryptocurrency side? The uh, the team currently is, you know, loosely divided into two. Okay. Um, but it's not so much of focusing on everyday angels, and it's more of focusing on non-crypto startups okay. versus uh blockchain leverage startups. Okay. Both of them are accessible to everyone. Yeah. In very much the same way. Yeah. It's just that whether, you know, a certain investor like you may take an interest in a blockchain and drones and another investor, my sister, may be more interested in uh, education tech yeah. or restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, so uh if if there's anything people know about blockchain, it's that one uh, a lot of people made a lot of money off of it, mm -hmm. and a lot of people lost a lot of money on it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so there's a lot of volatility in that space. Being a good investor is being an informed investor, making good decisions and knowing that there is a chance for loss. How do you recommend uh, people make sure that they're leveraging their hard-earned money to make sure that they're investing wisely? What are some things that they can be doing? 
the one thing that stands above all else yeah. is diversification. Okay. If you have a thousand dollars, do not put a thousand dollars into one company on Republic. Yeah. Divide it into ten. Or even twenty, because you can invest as little as fifty dollars, or even lower than that on Republic. Yeah. Because most of these companies probably won't yield a return, but if you invest in ten, but two yeah. making it, and your fifty dollars investment can be ten x, twenty x. In the case of Uber, many thousand x. Yeah. <laughs> so diversification. Uh, below that, I yeah. would say, particularly for early stage investing deprioritize the notion that this is the company that's going to make me rich yeah. and instead pay a lot of attention on are these founders uh, doing things that I find compelling? Yeah. Are they solving a problems that I can identify with? And do they look like a team that are passionate and resilient enough to go the long way and win the game? Yeah. So if you don't understand the problem that a company is trying to solve, I would be very cautious bef in, in investing. I apply that, own, that, that methodology for my own investing um, you know, for, for quite some time. Absolutely. Love that. All right, so... You've had, I, I last night I was on the platform. I signed up. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Haven't invested in anything yet, but uh, it's on the radar for sure. You have some really cool companies that are using the platform to raise capital, um, both, both with the blockchain technologies, I checked that side out, and also in the standard investment. Tell us about some of those companies that are on the platform. So while I can't tell you which one I think is the best one, <laughs> because I think that they are all uh, very credible, that's why they've passed our due diligence phase. Yeah. Um, the, I do identify with the ones that I think are solving a serious problem okay. for me. Uh, so for example, there's a project right now called Ample Foods. Yeah. And the founder, uh, you know, a young founder, was looking for he loves fitness and he was looking for meals that he can very quickly eat in this case drink <laughs> before or after a workout yeah. so he you know created this product that's organic in a bottle that all you have to do is put in some water shake it up and it ends up being like a fresh you know, fruit shake or, 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 or meal shake um, with all the relevant nutrients. So since I used to do CrossFit, not so much anymore, <laughs> uh, and I was looking for something like that, that's how I came to find a product connected with the founders. Yeah. And lo and behold, some three, four years later, now it's on Republic. Wow. Uh, you know, another one is a blockchain project called Funware or Funcoin. Uh, and I, of course, pay a lot of attention to to the crypto space yeah here's a company the parent company is a nasdaq listed wow company uh, issuing tokens in their technologies on one out of every 10 cell phone in the world wow. so it's a major enterprise uh, applying blockchain technology and so it's something that i can relate to uh, there are projects on there that i there's an ai project i don't understand and so <laughs> i love the founders very mission driven uh, but i don't understand well enough uh, about the company to to comment on it yeah. uh, so this is just highlighting how i personally would look at projects out of the 16 17 companies and fire a few that i myself understand for my subjective experience one of the things i i picked up on and i and this may not be a fair question but uh i'll ask it and if it isn't then we'll move on i've heard rumors that you're working on some media stuff that uh you're doing internally with republic is that true we have always had a, uh, a media um focus okay. if our message is to hope uh to get 50% of the public to know about investing and buying in. Yeah. The only way to do it is through media. And that's why I'm so grateful for you, Michael, to give me the opportunity to be on this podcast uh, and, and share the story with your audience. Yeah. Uh, we had a TV show with Sony Entertainment and Tim Draper's called Meet the Drapers, uh -huh. similar to Shark Tank, yeah. but at home people can invest along what? Along the way, <laughs> uh, it's on season two, uh, and we have. I think we're going to be on uh, on uh, 
uh, public television in five cities uh, uh, throughout the year on wow. MSNBC and Fox News and whatnot. Uh, and I'm sure that there'll be many more uh, media efforts that we will try and convince and, and, and hope to get the message out there. Is there a way for people to find the Meet the Drapers project? Yes, if they go on meetthedrapers.com. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think information right now is a cable show. Yeah. So it's on Sony uh, TV cable in, I think, 130 countries or so. Wow, crazy, crazy. <laughs> Remind people again how they can find and connect with you. Republic.co, not .com, .co, uh, and uh, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, at uh, Kendrick uh, Esquire, Kendrick ESQ. Okay. I will make sure that all of those links are in the episode notes. So if you're listening right now, wherever you're listening, it's in the episode notes. Just go there, copy and paste it, put it in your browser. You can get right there. We're going to be back for rapid fire questions with Kendrick Gwynn. The heartbeat of JumboThink is to help you turn your dreams and ideas into reality. One of the ways we do that are through our free guides, like our Dreamer's Guide to Micro Experiments, to help you have a strategy to turn those dreams and ideas into reality. Here's what you need to do. Head on over to jumblethink.com slash guides. That's jumblethink.com slash guides. Download your free guide and start the journey of using micro experiments, small little shifts and changes you can make in your everyday life to make those dreams and ideas a reality. We also want to take a moment right now to thank some of our sponsors for today's episode. Being a small business owner or an entrepreneur can be hard. If you're like me, your own projects are often the last ones you do. This leaves you without the graphics, website, or copy you need to effectively promote your business and tell your story. Now, what if I told you that there was a better way? Our friends over at Floxy can help you with on-demand, unlimited graphic design, web development, and copywriting with plans starting at a flat rate of $349 per month with no hidden fees. Oh, and their plans are also month-to-month -month with a seven-day money-back guarantee for all new accounts. All this can be done with a 24-hour turnaround for most projects and revisions. So check them out at Floxy.com. That's Floxy, F-L-O-C-K-S-Y dot com. Is your life crazy busy? Well, I know mine is, and I want to spend as much time in my day doing the things I love to do. One of the things I don't love to do is spend days looking for great airfares. Well, our friends over at MightyTravels.com have made it easy for you to go in, set notifications, to get emails and text messages directly to you so that you never miss a great deal on the flight that you're looking to book. So swing on over to MightyTravels.com slash JumbleThink. That's MightyTravels.com slash JumbleThink to learn more about how you can get notifications right to your own devices and score the best price tickets for your next trip. At the dawn of the 19th century, forward-thinking people moved to the commercial centers of Europe. Moving into the 20th century, America welcomed millions into the land of freedom and opportunity. It is now the 21st century. Many of the successes and fortunes of our generations will be made in China. To learn how you can seize opportunity in China, follow the Opportunity in China podcast. The Opportunity in China podcast is available anywhere podcasts are streamed, or you can visit our website at opportunityinchina.com. Now let's jump into rapid fire questions with our guest, Kendrick Gwynn. We are back for rapid fire questions with Kendrick Gwynn, CEO and co-founder of Republic. All right, are you ready for rapid fire questions? So ready. <laughs> All right. As a child, what did you want to do when you grew up? A lawyer. Okay. And you did it. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> what is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Talk to your uh, 10 closest friends. Okay. And based on that advice, decide how to proceed. You have moved from the world of being an attorney to being a entrepreneur and a founder and a CEO. What's one lie or misconception about entrepreneurship that you want to break? That it's a quick way to make money or is cool. Okay. Um, it's an insanely hard process that takes everything out of you. Yeah. So it's 
far less glamorous than people may think. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't pay very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just talking before about you were up way late last night. I've done that coding <laughs> for our agency at times. Been up late because I had to get something done for a project. And I'm getting paid uh, less than uh, my first year out of law school. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but it's going to be worth it in the long haul. So much. I mean, so worth it. Uh, yeah. I'm having a, a blast. What is one change you'd like to see in the world? Less uh, divisive talks. Yeah. You know, we all have our good size and let's just get along and assume the best in one another. Yeah, love that. You uh, are building something of substance that is life-changing for people. What do you want your legacy to be? I don't think of legacy uh, for myself. I think that in life, you just got to make sure that first be happy in whatever you're doing okay. uh, and with whatever opportunities that are given to you, do your best to give the most to those around you. Yeah. Uh, and life is just one stage. There's, there's no legacy that uh, that's in my mind now or in the future. Wow. You are very driven, uh, very focused in what you do, but what inspires you to keep on going? Uh, the pursuit of happiness. Okay. That if I'm bored, then I'm not happy. I got to keep on doing. So Republic is a, a a journey of finding that one thing that I can be happy doing for more than just a year or two. It's been more than two years, and I think it's going to be another 20 or 30 before I get bored. Wow. What is one book you think every entrepreneur should read, and why? Uh, there isn't one. I don't believe in reading a book and taking a lot of like wisdom out of it. The time is changing so fast. Mm -hmm. uh, be humble and uh, leave if you can. You know, a few hours a week, uh, and just you know, go whether it's an article, whether it's a book that's on New York Times bestseller, whatever it is, just content. Be exposed to different ideas, and you're gonna come up with your own way on how to lead your own startup or your own life. Yeah. In the startup world, there is a lot of pressure to succeed. Uh, how do you define success for yourself? That I'm happy net net uh, yeah. doing what I'm doing and that the people around me in my company are feeling the same way. What one trend are you most excited about right now? Social engagement. Uh, all the negative talks or whatnot, but there's no question that as a society, uh, as a global community, we are much more engaged. Okay. We care a lot more than the generation before us. All right. That can lead to so many good things and bad. What is one habit you find helpful in your life as an entrepreneur? Uh, meditation uh, is very hard for me to do, and that, that doesn't mean anything specific. Uh, just, you know, half an hour to, like, calm your mind and snap out of the rat race yeah. uh, would do you and everyone good. What is one thing you wish you ha would have known when you started out? How insanely trying and <laughs> challenging it in fact is. Yeah. I, I knew it would be hard. I didn't know it would be this hard. Yeah. If and it doesn't stop. No, it doesn't. I, <laughs> I, I can relate to that for sure. <laughs> if you weren't doing what you're doing today, what do you think you'd be doing? Probably uh, in Washington, D.C., in uh, doing some political activity. Okay. Uh, and doing pro bono legal work on the side. And, and aren't you glad that you're not there right now? <laughs> I, I'm gr this week, yes, because, you know, there's no job to, to, to do. Yeah. <laughs> what is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Uh, similar to leg legacy, um, I don't have a dream mm -hmm. that I haven't. Uh, I'm pursuing the dream is to be happy always yeah and I'm pursuing that and doing that right now yeah. um so so there is none yeah as we wrap up today's episode we always like to leave our guests have a final thought what's your final thought for our listeners today similar to voting uh everyone's act if you do so consciously in an engaged engaged way matters yeah so you can vote with your money, you can vote with your voice, you can vote on the street, just be an engaged citizen, member of society, and uh, invest, vote, be out there f supporting whatever cause that, that speaks to you. Kendrick, it's been a true honor to sit here with you and, and hear your story, hear the Republic story. Thanks for taking time out and being with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. 
Once again, we want to thank today's guest, Kendrick Gwynn, for taking time out, sharing his story, and giving us amazing insights into the world of startups and the world of Republic. You can find his links in the episode notes. We also want to thank our sponsors for today's episode, Floxy, OpportunityInChina.com, and Mighty Travels. Make sure to go to and support what they're doing as they've supported this podcast and they've helped us make make it possible to share this message and share Kendrick's story with you today. Here's my final thought for you today. I believe you're created for something special, that you have a purpose and a destiny. Begin to tap into that, begin to create that, and begin to chase those dreams and ideas. It doesn't take a big step to make them a reality. So today, think about that one small step you can take to move that dream and idea, that created purpose forward and begin to change the world around you. Until next time, make sure you're going out there and dreaming big and changing the world around you. Vous êtes une autre personne. Les mères de famille, les enfants peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant